What is going on guys? It's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to episode 14 of the TNA save on TW. We are back in the New Jersey Atlantic City Convention Center again. Decided just to do a, a double taping here, allegedly, is how they put it in real life as we are on our go home show before we get to Retribution. It's so hoping for a good 8,500 crowd at the Impact Wrestling event. 13 segments today, mostly matches, a couple angles to just get hyped to get ready for the pay-per-view. So without further ado guys, let's get cracking in with the show, let's see what this will bring us. If we can push to a 70 rating, hopefully, we'll soon see, I'm thinking we'll just have a shot of it. We start off, Austin Aries and Red Titus come down to the ring, they take microphones and start talking to the crowd, before eventually getting interrupted by Kenny King and Adam Cole. They have a big argument going back and forth in the microphone before agreeing to face each other tonight in a main event tag team match. 73 rating. Both storylines progress. No worker skills improved, but that's a decent solid start to the event. In a match that's some good action and average heat, Magnus returns to defeat Billy Ray in 10-22 with the Tormentum. During a match with Mike Bennett run in and attack Billy Ray. All your road agents reports are just on the, the commentary and stuff like that. Worker improvements are none, but a 58 is solid for two workers that really haven't done much recently, but are still kind of upper mid card and main event talents. Abyss then sets up a table in a kind of small segment and he takes manager of Shad Gaspard, which is Washington, and puts him through a power, bo power table with a power bomb to send a message to Shad Gaspard. He continues the biggest monster storyline and it gives a 51 rating. Next up was two uh, other main eventers or upper mid cards with nothing much on. In a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat, John Hennigan defeats Samoa Joe in 827 via pinfall with a super kick during the match. We also had Hawkins running and attack Samoa Joe. So Hawkins is continuing the feud, getting John Hennigan the win, and that gets a 55 rating. John Hennigan improved his technical skills and Samoa Joe improved his performance skills, so overall, pretty average but pretty decent. The cameras then pick up in Velvet Sky and Angelina Love right as they jump Beth and Gail Kim. After a few seconds, the beautiful people has Beth and Gail Kim on the ground and begins laying out them with a series of kicks. As the announcers and fans scream their outrage, Velvet Sky pulls out a paint bucket from underneath the ring with a scale of menace. Both villains proceed to paint Bail, uh, Beth and Gail Kim yellow. So uh, a storyline to get the a segment to get the storyline sorry of the, the knockouts up a wee bit. A 64 rating for four knockouts is pretty good. And hopefully that gets a good bit of heat on Angelina and Velvet Sky before the Fatal 4-Way at the pay-per-view. And I matched it, solid running, in-ring action, but not much in the way of heat. Shad Gaspar's squashy spud in 636 with magnificent 50, uh, 49 rating. Washington get, did good stuff back uh, at ringside, even though he kind of injured since being put through a table. But it's just a match to kind of to demonstrate the and showcase the monster abilities of Shad Gaspard. The Bulls then challenge the Bromans to a match in order to get it. They say they'll put their tag titles on the line in the match, so that's going to happen. The Bulls are going to defend the titles against Girella and Eddie Kingston and the Pro Men, and if they can get another tag team together, I'll make it a fatal four-way. That is to be confirmed. Eddie Edwards has uh, his improvement acting, so that's good as well. In a match at average heat and good action, Jeff Hardy defeats MVP in 6.35 via pinfall with a twist of fate. 49 rating, again MVP's got absolutely no momentum so that could be harming him. Keeps Jeff Hardy relevant in his match with James Storm and it improves his rumble skills and his performance skills. We then have Chris Hemi backstage with Drew Galloway and Harry Smith talking about their upcoming match. This is going to be a big British tag team, one of the tag teams I could bring in for Retribution in the tag match, a 56 rating. Christy Emmy has now switched to a fan favourite gimmick and it got an initial 99 rating. So an average segment there. In a match that's some good action and average heat, Matt Hardy and Ted DiBiase defeated Drew Galloway and Harry Smith in 12.07 when Ted DiBiase defeated Drew Galloway with Dream Street. So basically keeping Matt Hardy strong Ted DiBiase has kind of just lost his way a wee bit, but that's a, a kind of match to get him over a wee bit. And um, hopefully this can be a, a kick on for the likes of Drew Galloway and Harry Smith to go, right, we've lost this, no more arrogance. We are going to kick on and really take this tag division by storm. 
talking to James Storm. Jeff Hardy is celebrating the ring, James Storm running the rings and attacking him, beating Jeff Hardy down to the mat. So basically just another one to get that storyline over, get ready for the match at the pay-per-view and I get a 53 rating. And then finally we have a good match. In a match with some good action and average sheet, Adam Cole and Kenny King defeated Austin Aries and Rhett Titus in 2022. When Adam Cole defeated Rhett Titus, be a pinfall after using a foreign object. Adam Cole seemed off his game. Two storylines of uh, advanced for this segment. We still get a 75 despite Adam Cole being off his game. And no work improvements despite that. And to finish the show off, in the ring, Bobby Lashley and Bobby Roode are having a contract signing for the upcoming match. With Kurt Angle serving as the host of the contract signing segment. Bobby Lashley signs the contract first before handing it over to Bobby Roode. We jots down his name and making the match official. However, things don't go to plan as afterward Bobby Roode, Bobby Lashley get into a brawl. Perfect way you'd set up going into a pay per view with the two fighting each other, Kurt Angle being the, the GM. Unfortunately, still as a non worker we can't use. So, an 80 segment there. No worker improves, but solid, solid segment with them. Pre booking, I'll just book that when I get to the pay per view. And overall, that show gets 73. That may actually be my best TNA show yet. And the show increased their popularity in 21 regions, so that is a phenomenal show for TNA level. Now let's see if that's reflected in the ratings. If this hurries up. I have to laugh, it says processing workers Jacob Novak, God remember him in WWE. He's just one of the guys just did not have the look to be a wrestler in the WWE. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long. There we go. Quick look at my emails and it says ROH have offered a contract to Ted DiBiase. Harry Smith is suffering a grueling schedule and our rating went from a 273 last week to an 283 this week, so a good show there. Um, I'll work on the Ted DiBiase contract after this video. Don't know if there's anything interesting happening, just Japan stuff, mostly Japan stuff because it is the first day. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So a solid 73 show, I'm happy with that. You know, it's a, step, a good way to go into your pay-per-view, it's a step in the right direction. And hopefully, you know, the pay-per-view can maybe get 74, 75, when push to that. And hopefully really kick on in 2015. So thank you for joining us guys for the last impact of 2014. And I hope you also will join me for the video for the pay-per-view retribution, which will be up in a couple of days. Until then, this is Twitter on Maxwell. Thank you for tuning in and I'll speak to you again real soon. Bye-bye.